really excited to talk about plates. Plates are one of those things that feel very advanced and they are. So a lot of beginners don't try them except on accident when they knock a bowl down and it falls flat on the bat. And I think plates are one of those things, they're hard because it takes a different skill set than doing bowls and other vertical things. So it's just a few things that you have to learn to make it better, to make it easier. Basically, you gotta get the tricks or the hacks and then you gotta practice that. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna show you some of my hacks for making plates that just makes the whole process easier. So, once you learn those things though, it's a lot, a lot easier. So obviously the first thing is just to get it centered, so I'm going to center it. And I used to center with my right hand here and then my left thumb kind of over the top. I have some wrist problems from all my days of clean living and extreme sports and whatnot. So I'm taking it easy on it. I'm trying to keep it more in a neutral position. So I'm using my left hand and I've seen a lot of potters do this anyway. That way you're kind of pushing against the spinning of the wheel. And then you can kind of do a hand like this or you can use your thumb or a fist even. You can lock your thumb and hand together like this. But same old, same old, you're making them work together, bracing your body. And I'm learning with the standing wheel, you uh, you know, normally I use my legs. I, I tuck it into my hip, jo hip joints like this so I can use my whole body like that. But I don't have that option here. So I'm kind of just uh, getting like more of an athletic stance so I can kind of push with my back leg and kind of lean into it a bit. That works pretty well. That's looking pretty good right there. Get one more hard push. Notice how I'm centering it kind of low, right? It's a low, low hockey puck rather than a kind of taller mound. And then, so even from the beginning, it's going to be a little different. And some people even center it flatter. They just mash it all the way down, which is okay too. And I'll try to do that in another video at some point. But then we're just going to do the same old, same old. We're going to open up the center. And we're going to leave a little extra clay. So if you leave a half an inch in the bottom, that's okay. More is going to be way better with a plate. If you get too little clay, there's really not much coming back from it. And you're going to trim a plate on the wheel almost 100% of the time. So you leave more clay, it survives the drying process better to get to leather hard, and then you have an intact plate to work with and you can just trim more off, and that's fine. So I'm pulling it open sort of like you would with a bowl, but then once you get to this point, there is no pulling up. I'm gonna clean all the goop out from under here. And I'm actually taking this donut and I'm going to push it down and kind of smear it across the bat like that. Clean my hands off a little bit. Oh, it's chilly. Should have got the hot water. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to push down. And it is nice to use a sponge for this. I'm kind of distributing my fingers across and around the sponge so I can push all around this little thing here this little donut and then i'm really using my thumb to keep it going down rather than coming out and folding over okay so see how you can you could probably see it from there the way it's squishing down and out that's what we want you're also doing a good job this right now of compressing the clay so that's good too i got it actually a little too thick 
which is fine. I'm telling you, if you get it too thick on the bottom, that's fine. Because you're going to do a lot of compressing and shaping to the bottom of the pot anyway, so you can pull some of that clay out later. If you err one direction, I'm telling you, err with a thicker plate. Okay, we're still doing the same thing, just pushing and smearing nice and slowly. Be careful not to push down with your finger right here. See how I have a little bit of a trough here? A little bit. I know I know how thick I can get it, so it's okay for me, but you want to keep it, you want to make it thicker here. Because your plate is either going to have a perfectly flat bottom and then taper up here, or it's going to have a little bit of a curve. I like a little bit of a dish to it, you know. Okay, clean up your mess a little bit. I'm adding water to the sponge because you don't want it to get dry at this point. And I'm just going to keep pushing down and coming out. And you have to leave a little bit. Depends on what kind of plate you want, really. But you want to leave a little bit of clay here uh, for a, a lip. And if you're going to do a big flared rim, then you need more clay here. If you're just going to do a little curve up, sort of like that, then you can just leave that much. That's fine. Okay, so now it is still fairly thick, so I can go in here with my sponge, and I'm just going to you press and hold in the center until you get a dent. And then you very slowly pull and move that clay outward. If you need to get a little more water, you can. That was a lot more water, but that's okay. And I'm gradually releasing the pressure as I get out here, so I do get this taper up. Up and out, right? And if you need to kind of move ahead and blend it a little bit so you don't pull off little strips of clay, that's good, that's fine. Okay, and then you can kind of go back and do it again. If you need to check the depth, you can take your needle tool and you can go down, find your skinniest spot, slide your finger till it touches, pull it out, and check it. That's getting actually. As thin as you would want to get. That's too thin. You want it to be more like that in the center. So then you can trim half of that away and have a nice light plate. And sometimes you can actually take a little bit of this and you can work it back toward the center like this. But that takes some finesse. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to kind of make this nice transition all the way out to the edge. And obviously this is going to be kind of a small-ish plate. But I'm throwing on a small wheel, so there you go. But you could make a bigger plate. I could pull this all the way out to the edge and then create a lip off of there. And again, you just got to be so careful right here because it's just so easy to push too hard. I do it, I do it even, and I've done so many plates. And... But beginners, I notice, do that almost every time. I'm going to thin it a little bit more. Get a little bit more of a nice transition coming out. Like that. And you have a good side view, so you can probably see the thickness even better than I can, which is nice. Okay. Now we're going to do some compressing. I've already kind of been compressing with the sponge, but you want to really get some compression. So you're going to hold this at kind of a low angle. If you do it like this, it'll scrape away clay. And we're not trying to remove clay. We're just trying to pack the clay down. That's going to keep you from getting those S curves, S cracks. It's going to make it stronger, and you'll be able to trim it thinner, and just makes a better plate. So you start in the middle, and just gently press as you move outward. And see, it's still taking a little bit of clay off, but that's okay. See how slowly and gradually I'm moving. Just took a little bit. That's that's acceptable. Clear off your tool, and we'll do it again. Oops. Careful not to dig in there. You have to stay just to the right of the center. Okay, I'm going to compress it one more time, and then I think we'll call that good, because I did quite a bit of compressing with the sponge as well. And the way you hold the tool is going to determine sort of the shape that you're creating so and that just takes some experimenting but generally you want to just kind of hold as flat as you can and then when you get out to the edge here don't dig into your rim just kind of 
come over and stop right there. Okay. It's a nice little plate. Let's see what else we want to do now. So we're going to do a rim. It's always good to just take a look. I have plenty of thickness, which is great. That's going to trim up really nicely. We can put a nice foot in the bottom. Um, let's slow it down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to use some of this clay down here and I'm going to do a little pulling up. Let's get everything wet so I'm not sticking unnecessarily. I'm going to just pull some of this up. I'm not doing anything on the top. I'm just using some of that extra clay there. May as well, right? You don't want to get too crazy with this, but just to pull it, get a little overhang, make a little bigger plate out of the clay that we've got. It's also, I mean, if we're just talking general advice, it's also kind of a good idea to just go with more clay than you think you'll need. Start out with more. Because you can always cut a little off or whatever. But it's hard to add more. If you're like, oh, that plate isn't as big as I wanted. Okay, I'm starting to overhang it a bit, which is fine. But you've got to be careful about how much you do with that. Now I'm going to go back and just sort of check the angles. Really, most of this is this slope or lack of slope. But getting that right is really what makes a plate. And then, you know, it's like 80% this slope, and then it's like 20% the shape of your rim, and just kind of that it's pleasing. So, we have a lot of these big flared rim plates, and uh, they take up more space in the dishwasher and stuff, and my wife was like, hey, can you make some more just flat plates? So that's what this guy's going to be. So I'm actually going to, you can probably see I have a bit of a curve right here. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of that out, but still leave a little bit, because I like a little curve, like I said. I just be really careful as I get over to this rim so I don't just knock it down. Because this is a weak spot for sure, right? Or it will be if I put pressure on it. You can't compress it like you would the rest of the plate. Okay. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to slow it down. And I'm just going to tip that up. Just a little bit. Because you, you do have to have a... You have to have a rim to catch the food, right? When you push your fork... This is my fork. You push your fork with your food over the edge. you got to have something to hit. Otherwise it just falls off the edge. You want to be able to kind of scoop things up against the edge. little plate anatomy there. Okay, I'm going to go I'll give it a good little edge. Okay. And then I'll get my super smooth mud tool sponge. And I'll whoop, and I'll give it a little buff. We'll buff and a lift. <laughs> Something, I don't know. Okay. You can also, if you're feeling funky, you can do a little, like, spiral out, you know. If you're going to do that, I try to keep it really minimal. Um, the glaze will kind of pull in there and it'll be nice if you keep it minimal. But you don't want, you don't, really don't want texture in the bottom of your plate because then when you're moving your knife or your fork across it you, 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 you know you're hitting chatters that's no good so I'm just going to lightly knock that down make it really subtle okay let's have a look yeah beautiful now we'll do a little you don't even have to do this but we'll do a little trim 
Actually, I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. Um, you could trim some of that away if you want, but not necessary. Because um, we're going to come back and trim it all on the wheel. Now, the next thing you would do... Actually, one more thing. Just going to give it a tiny bit more lift because I just want to make so doubly sure that there isn't that weird little trough right there. I'm paranoid about that trough because I tell you it just looks if you want to make your plate look like a beginner plate make a make a dent right there because that's where that that's, that's where it all happens that's where every beginner plate ends up so there, there we got a little lift now I don't have my wire out here um, but you always want to cut it before you dry it so I would take my wire and I would spin it nice and slowly like super slow like that you know get a good grip on the wire start here and you know if your splash pan's in the way you can take your bat off take your splash pan off give your set yourself up for success because cutting it is really important it's all like goop off my hands so fresh and so clean okay right good grip on your wire make sure you can get in here with your thumb make sure you don't lop the edge of your thing off but get down under there, and you also have to make sure you're wide enough so that you're not going to get hung up when you get right here. If you're all in tight like this, you start to pull, you hit the pot, right? So you got to be out here, good grip on your thumbs, and then you're just going to slide through. And you have to pull tight. You have to pull really tight to keep the wire as flat as you can all the way through, right? And when you get to here, it's going to be a little tricky because you got to get it around. Maybe you have to put another finger in to hold it so you can get it out of there it might be worth taking this bat off or this this splash guard off to make it easier but you get cut through and then you're clean if you don't pull tight then the wire is going to lift up like this as you come through it's going to lift up and it's going to cut some of the meat out of your the bottom of your pot and you don't want to do that because right we we really the important part is to have enough meat in the center so that we can trim this guy and have it still be solid so um you'll cut it and then you can just take oops here i like to do a little clean up first Make sure that's not all slimy right there we go and then you'll just take your bat off the wheel You'll dry it like this for, it's going to depend on your climate and temperature and humidity and all these factors, but somewhere between like 5 and 15 hours. But you're just going to watch it until this rim starts to become leather hard. And when that rim is leather hard, then you're going to recut it, Not probably not on the wheel, just set it down on a table. If you have a friend who can hold on to the bat, that can be nice. And cut it again because it will kind of stick back. So you're going to cut it again. Then you're going to take another bat and you're going to set it on top here. And you're going to sandwich it like that. And that's going to be on your leather hard rim. So it'll be plenty strong to withhold that, with, withstand that. And then you're going to flip, flip both of them together. Then you'll have it on the other bat. And then this bat... You can, you'll kind of have to pry and peel it off to get it off. So then it'll be sitting face down. And then you're going to dry it for another 5 to 15 hours, depending on your environment. And if you're not able to monitor during that time, you can cover it for days. And then come back and then cover it when you have time to monitor it. But you do need to monitor it because you have to have the right dryness. So then your bottom will get leather hard. Once your bottom is leather hard, you'll come back, set it back here, and you'll trim it. And with some luck, tomorrow I will trim this bad boy so you can see the whole process together. But that's a plate. I don't know if I gave a little, you know, give you a little close-up hopefully here so you can see some of the details. It's a beaut. 
So thanks so much for watching. Uh, and I'm excited to get this guy dried up so I can show you how to trim it tomorrow. I'll see you then.